Just like jumping off the tallest building in New Atlantis with your new jetpack, it's best to know that you actually need a skill to use it first. Now, Starfield is rather stingy with the XP and levels. In fact, you'll spend more hours bashing your head against the wall than actually achieving said levels. So by 50 hour mark, your character might look just as pathetic as Captain Penis. Yes, that's my character, by the way. So here are a few things. Hell, everything you need to know about the skills in Starfield. The best skills to pick and which ones are completely useless trash. Oh, and remember, there is no respecking in Starfield either, unless you count mods. So pick carefully. So, without pissing around on electrical cabinet to test out the theory of exploding through your dick, let's jump in! Oh, yeah, bro! Do you even lift, bro? Physical skills, as the name implies, pertains to your character's physical abilities. Boxing, unless you're making a joke Fistatron 2000 character, avoid. Fitness, useless, but we'll get to that. Stealth, the whole system is just as ruined as the Octomom's crotch. Here we also get to meet Starfield's unlocking capability. Without specking into this skill, you don't have the stealth meter that the other Bethesda games had by default. However, this does not mean you can't perform stealth without it. Though I do only recommend getting level 1 just to get that meter, but even that's kinda useless considering enemy sponginess. Though it is good for stealing and pickpocketing. Weightlift. Now, in normal games, this is one of the more useful skills, but I guarantee in Starfield, it's utterly useless. See, whenever you step over that encumbered line, you start losing stamina more and more. I mean, O2. And once that depletes, you start losing health. However, this won't kill you. Now, you do lose fast traveling ability, but unlike in Skyrim and Fallout games, you do not slow down. And since you move just as fast, why bother with these weight limits? Especially once you pick up the Dragon Shot personal atmosphere. Wellness. Eh, good to have, but a waste of skill points. At this point, if you ended up spending skill points in the only useful skill in this tab, Stealth, you could start picking up the second row of skill 3. Energy weapon dissipation? Useless. Environmental conditioning? Useless. Gymnastics? Eh, cool, but don't waste your skill points unless you've got nowhere else to put them. Nutrition? Useless. Pain tolerance? Also useless. And at this point, to progress further in the tree, either gymnastics or pain tolerance could be the dump skills. So let's say you move on to the expert skills. Cellular regeneration. I gotta say, the game is not that difficult that you have to worry about conditions, so I would say avoid. And I play on the hardest difficulty. Decontamination? Exactly the same skill copy-pasted, so avoid. And finally, martial arts. Well, really only good if you build up your Fisting Man 2000 or Spec in Melee. And so, by some miracle, if you wasted far too many skill points in this tree, you got the chance to take the master skills. Concealment. Now, this is the real stealth skill. Now, in Skyrim, this was all in one neat skill tree, but now you have to waste 12 levels in this godforsaken tree before you get to something remotely even good. Now, of course, pick this if you're able. Neurostrikes. Again, Fisting Tron 2000 likes, but all others quiver. And finally, Rejuvenation. It's nice to have at level 1, not 12 skill points later. So yeah, as a whole tree, it's not very good except for the concealment at the end, really. Ah, anyways, moving on then to social. Mmm, yes, yeah, so precisely indeed. Speaking skills and all that's related to talking and interacting with NPCs. Commerce. Well, basically the game designer saying, Oh, well, it would be a shame if I uh, made uh, prices worse and sold you the solution to it for four of your levels. <laughs> now go waste time grinding. But otherwise, of course, useful and a solid pick. Gastronomy. Useless. Persuasion. Now, unlike a lot of other abilities, Persuasion is unlocked by default. All this skill does is make it a little bit better. Oh, and Precognition Dragon Shot makes this even more useless to pick. Scavenging. Now pray to our Jesus. And also it does highlight in different color materials that you've tracked, plus a better loot. So, solid pick. And finally, Thief. This skill pisses me off. To start pickpocketing, you need to unlock this skill, but not Persuasion. How about... 
Fuck you, Bethesda! Still, as a skill, it's very optional. Very few NPCs actually have anything worthwhile on them, and it also doesn't give you any XP for successful pickpocketing. While story-wise, it might come in handy maybe 1% of the time, but usually there are already alternatives available, and it's not as a big a deal as in Skyrim or even hell, Fallout. So to say, basically stay away, or at least spend only one skill point in it. And that concludes the first tier of social skills. So commerce, scavenging and even thief could be your picks and four points allow you to move on to the next tier. Deception. Despite the name, it's a piracy skill, basically. Only pick it up if you want to pirate. Diplomacy. You can make enemies stop fighting. Wait, what the fuck? That's not how diplomacy works. Anyways, useful only if you max it out. And even then, only if you play as a thief or a coward. I mean, pacifist. Intimidation. Useless. Negotiation? Oh, look, another ability locked behind a skill, unlike persuasion. <sighs> Just like Thief, only good for one skill point. Isolation? Interesting idea, but temperamental. Kinda useless too. In this list, I recommend picking either Deception for Space Pirates in full, and maybe specking one skill in Bribery, and maybe Isolations if you really want to. So, if you manage to waste four more skills here, we move up to the Expert tier. Instigation! Oh, funny skill! Yes, like Fury spell in Skyrim, it's always massive blast to look at. Leadership. Nice to have, but not necessary unless you're heavy relying on companions. Outpost management? Wait, hold on. Why does a social skill give more resource production of your outpost? I mean, it's really good, but what the fuck is this skill tree? And that's the expert tier. All three skills are very nice to have and most of all instigation for the sheer stupidity value. So, we're clearly moving on to the master tier. Manipulation. As an ultimate skill, interesting. However, NPCs don't have that much to do in the first place. Ship command. Simply expanding your ship crew. A level 1 skill if I've ever saw one. Still, nice to have, but that's about all. Xeno sociology? Oh gods, a copy-paste skill again. Like manipulation. Just for Xenos. <sighs> eh. And so goes the social skills. It's a mixed bag with some really nice and otherwise confusing things in it, but still certainly worth investing early on. Murder! And so we're moving on to my favorite, combat. As the name implies, this is where your guns get all the power from, and other things. Ballistics, quite useful for early games since most of the weapons you're gonna be using are ballistic. Dueling. Just increasing melee damage, Th that's about it. Also surprisingly useful at the early game, but very quickly drops off. So unless you're really specking into melee only, don't. Lasers. Uh, increasing laser output, that's about it. And chance to tank your frame rates with setting somebody on fire. Kinda funny, but you also have to decide whether you're gonna go ballistic route or the laser route. And spec in one of them. Pistol certification. Well, obviously for pistols only. A far worse choice to ballistics. Shotgun certification. Again, the same thing. And that's the first list of combat skills. Generally speaking, just simple flat number upgrades. Normally, I'd say this is where I would spec all my stuff first. But the problem is, there are skills that unlock abilities first. And these just give extra efficiency to these items. So before you spend stuff here, unlock skills that give you abilities. But anyways, let's move on to the next tier. Demolitions. Grenades become more powerful, but honestly speaking, they're not that good in the first place. So I would say skip this one. Heavy weapon certification. Just like the pistol one, this is just for the big guns. And if you like using them, oh boy, this is nice. But first, get the primary weapon damage type before getting specific gun types. Incapacitation. Hey you, are you a softy? Don't you like killing people? Well, I guess you can pick this skill. I'd say it's kinda lame, but by all means, EM weapons also have a heart, I guess. Rifle certification. Again, the same thing. Ballistics first, or lasers first, and then specific weapon certifications. And that's the advanced tier. Just like Fallout 3, you can, mm, you can smell the wasted skill points in a somewhat overbloated skill tree. Though if I had to recommend something, first obviously you would go with the damage type and then with the weapon certification, but because the only damage type here is EM... Uh, heavy weapons? <laughs> Anyways, next up, expert tier, and we start with Marksman. Adding crit chance to non-automatic weapons, an interesting choice, but you're relying on a crit chance. And all this skill really does is increase the crit chance. So rather go with a base damage increase that you can rely on first. 
Particle beams. Yeah, just a normal damage type increase. Always good to pick first. Rapid reloading. An interesting skill to have later down the line. Though considering how spongy enemies are, you're gonna have to reload, so take your pick at this point. Sniper certification. Really kinda useless skill except for the last two ranks. So basically it's even more useless than the normal weapon certification. God damn. Targeting. Between hip fire increasement and marking of enemies. Overall, targeting is not a problem, so that is ignored, but hipfire increasement? Now that's a good one, if you just like to run and gun, but otherwise, don't pick this. Or at least, don't pick it first. And that's the expert tier of the combat skills. Generally speaking, marksman and particle beams are the really only useful ones. All the other ones kind of feel like wasting skill points. But anyways, let's move on to the master level. Armor penetration. Just like the name implies, makes enemy armor less effective. Useful in the late game. Crippling, allowing you to stagger enemies and even deal extra damage once they're staggered. An interesting skill that will help with some tougher enemies. And sharp shooting, basically increasing critical hit damage. And just like with all the critical nonsense, go first with the base damage first before going for criticals. So from this list, I would say crippling probably is the most interesting and more useful. After that, it's armor penetration and then sharp shooting. But like I said previously, First, unlock skills that give you abilities, like, for example, stuff in science. Hmm, I wonder what would happen if I combine my cat with nitro glycerin. Crafting, manufacturing, building, modding, and all the other useful, wonderful things that you can't really do without properly. And boy, you're gonna sink a lot of points here if you want to even do half as much as you want to. So then, starting with aerodynamics. This simply makes your ship jump further. Somewhat useful, but very unnecessary at the very early game until basically the end game. And even then, so skip for now. Geology. Well, hey, you want to gather more materials? This is the skill you're gonna have to pick. Frankly speaking, it was easier for me to buy these things that I needed for crafting than gathering them. So I would say also, skip this. And just get more money and buy the stuff you need. Medicine. I would say this is definitely the best skill to pick so you can unlock the next tier where the real stuff is. Helps with the combat, helps with the gameplay, overall just nice. Unlike, let's say, nutrition because Jesus Christ, the food basically gives you no health back. Research methods. Basically makes the researching faster, better and cheaper. But considering the cost that most of these things have, I frankly would skip this unless I really was stingy for resources. And you really are. Surveying. Simply increases the efficiency of your scanner, which you don't get XP from either way. So really I ask, what is the point? And so, that's the novice tier list of science. As I said, medicine is the best one. After that, maybe geology and then maybe aerodynamics. Moving on, we got advanced tier. Starting with botany. Just like geology makes gathering resources from plants more efficient. An option to choose, but not maybe at start. Scanner, a weird splinter off of surveying. Why is this one separated? Oh wait, I know, because we need to pad the game with more grind, of course. So yeah, obviously, don't bother. Then we have spacesuit design and weapon engineering. Basically the same thing for both of them, just ones for armor and the other ones for the weapons. Very useful, very necessary if you love the guns the way I do. But there's a problem. In order to craft the ultimate level of upgrade, you will need another skill to unlock the research. So you're basically dumping 12 levels or 12 skill points into this just to be able to mod the guns the way you want to. And as somebody who has dumped those skill points, I can tell you, it's easier to find a gun on the ground that deals more damage than bother with modding. And that's just sad. And no, I'm not kidding. Find a gun on the ground that deals better damage or is just cooler then mod them. Safe to say, reserve modding for late game. And finally, zoology. Basically the same as geology and botany, but for animal killing. And that's the advanced tier for the science. However, remember that you don't need to spend skill points in this tier to unlock the next one. So rather than dumping skill points in weapon engineering, which is probably the best one, maybe pick research methods or medicine to unlock the expert tier. And here we start with astrophysics. Unlocks better scanning for your ship when you're entering a system and beyond it. Surprisingly decent, but not entirely necessary. Chemistry. Ah, here we go. Unlocks ability to craft better stuff for crafting overall. For example, gun modding needs adhesive quite a bit. Building and research as well. Literally everything needs it. So this is basically the one you need the most. 
Finally, Outpost Engineering. This definitely is helpful, but not necessary at first. Though you will need a lot of storage, because look at this is what I got! And that's the expert tier for science. I would say chemistry is definitely the first one you get immediately as you start the game, as fast as you can. Right after that, for storage, you probably should get Outpost Engineering. And then, we can move on to the master level. And now, Tronic Fusion. This increases reactor power from your ship. And it's useful, sure, but also unnecessary. Planetary Habitation basically unlocks you ability to build on certain treacherous planets. Unless there is a really big need, I would say definitely skip it. And finally, the special projects. The thing that you need for the ultimate modifications for guns and outposts and everything else. So this comes along with all the other modification skills. But just like I said, you can find better gear on the ground than try to mod it. This sadly is not Skyrim. What do you mean you don't have VGA ports anymore? And what do you mean that micro USB is standard? And so we move on to the last skill tree, the tech. This is where you're gonna find mostly spaceship related stuff and some techy stuff like lock picking or I mean hacking, uh, dick picking, there we go. Here we start off with ballistics weapon system. Just like with the weapons, it's basically increasing the damage of ballistic weapons for your ship. A nice to have, but not necessary. Instead, boost pack training. This unlocks ability to use your jetpack. And that's such bullshit. I mean, how could you need to unlock ability to use a goddamn jetpack? It's like saying, oh, you need a skill to unlock aiming down sights on your gun. Or hell, even holding your goddamn gun. It's just so stupid. And then, of course, you remember that, oh, persuasion is given for free, and yet not pickpocketing and a few other skills. Oh, but at least it's not as infuriating as piloting. Jesus, in order to fly a bigger ship, you basically need to max out this skill. And when waste four skill points. I kinda can understand with a spaceship, but jetpacks, Jesus Christ. Anyways, moving on. Then we have security. Oh look, dick picking is also unlocked by default, it's just that more difficult tiers you need to unlock with skill points. So again with the jetpack, anyways. Then we have targeting system. This allows you to specifically target enemies' modules on the ship, much like VATS did in Fallout series. Thanks to this skill, you can disable enemies' engines and then board it and of course take and steal the ship. Only one skill point and that's fine. Going beyond that is unnecessary. I'd say this is a wonderful early game pick. And that's the Tech Tree's first tier. I would recommend definitely one point in boost packs, one point in targeting control, and then everything else in piloting or security. Either which way, you're gonna need those both either way. So then we move on to Advanced with Energy Weapon Systems. Just like Ballistics in the previous tier, it increases energy weapon output. An optional and not necessary. Engine Systems simply improves your ship's boost and speed. Considering how sluggish Starfield's ships feel, this kinda might be worth it. But considering that you already spent about 10 points in the last tier, you don't really need to spend anything here. Payload. This simply increases the capacity of your ship. Of course, considering that your ship can still fly being encumbered and you can carry most of the stuff anyways, the problem with inventory space is negligible and you do not need to pick this. Shield systems. Well, surprisingly nice little addition to increase your shield capacity and resistance at the very end. So, if you've got skill points, go for it. At this point, the novice tier of the tech tree is filled with great stuff and you'll probably unlock those first and you don't need to spend any points in this one, so moving on to the expert. Missile weapon systems and particle beam weapon systems. Both of them do exactly the same thing, just increase the damage for their respective types of weapons. Honestly, I wouldn't bother this unless I would really spec into the spaceships. And even then, the combat, I wouldn't call exactly the most difficult, so you don't need it in the first place either. Then we have robotics, which basically allows you to deal more damage to robots and affect them a bit more. Which, just like with a weapon specialization, good to have, but definitely not the first thing you should pick. Ever. And generally, after finishing the game, I gotta say, there are very few robots in the game that you can fight. So then moving on to Starship Design. Just like Outpost Design, this basically allows you to install specific better parts on your spaceship. Very useful to have once you've got the piloting done. And finally, Starship Engineering. Basically the ship version of medicine. It simply increases the speed at which your ship gets healed. Nice to have, but again, unnecessary. Especially when you kill everyone first. And once you spend 12 skill points in this tech tree, you can finally move on to the master tier. 
automated weapon systems. Basically the same thing as every other weapon system, just for turrets. And you know, this one's worth considering since you don't really need to do anything to shoot. Makes the life a little bit easier if you can kill stuff faster. Boost Assault Training. Yet another skill that is segregated from its original one, the jetpacks. Yay, artificial padding, it seems. Remember, there aren't that many environments in this game that has zero G, and you often aren't gonna be that close to your enemy to use these skills, so it's kinda pointless. And finally, EM Weapon Systems. Just like the all the other ones, but even more useless. Thank you, and good night. And that's the whole skill system in Starfield. Quite a lot of useless crap, but hopefully I helped you out with weeding out the chaff. Certainly the science and tech skills would be the ones that I would go with first, social as well, and only then combat, and finally physical. Unless you really want to go with the stealth stuff, I guess, but even then, no, there are better choices. But generally, I would recommend these following 10 skills at first. Thief, one skill to unlock that pickpocketing. Targeting systems, one skill point to unlock that targeting ability. Boost pack training, one skill point to unlock, of course, jetpacks. The rest of the points, drop in security and piloting. But anyways, if this video helped you out, well, of course, do subscribe and all that good stuff. Of course, do check out the Patreon if you want to support my content. And of course, check out all the other nonsense I've done. And I'll see you next time.